Welcome back, traders. Second portion of our show, Market Movers. And uh, I guess we'll start with Best Buy. It doesn't look like it was the best buy if you went home long last night. No, it wasn't, Joel. But did you look at this chart? There was a wall for me here at 28 and a half, like crazy. So somebody had been selling this thing for the last couple of weeks here at 28 and a half. I mean, we've got, you know, since December started, one, two, three highs right at 28 and a half. Yesterday's high, 28.46. We had it topped out back in uh, early December at 28.45. So there was sellers all over the place at 28 and a half. Even pre-market before the numbers came out, there was some action at 28 and a half. And obviously, you know, now it's just uh, they they had decent same store or decent sales figures. But when they came out or when they came out with the sales figures for last month, but now they come out with the earnings and the earnings are bad. So basically, they were selling all the stuff real cheap. So you know, they're moving product, but not making much money, obviously, on the product. Okay, from a technical perspective here, I mean, this thing has been in a really, really uh, tight range here. Of course, you've just mentioned you know, the upper boundaries of, of that range. Uh, lower boundaries of the range, uh, well, the 2610 was taken out. Uh, I guess you really got to look at this uh, This. If we can get through the uh, the morning low here, which is twenty five and a quarter, um, you really got to be looking at this twenty four sixty five level. Uh, that was a low back on October twentieth, uh, and I don't know, Dennis. Twenty four sixty five is the best number I can give on the downside. Just seems to be a lot of consolidation here in the twenty five and a half level. So uh, maybe a quick. A quick bounce off the 25 and a half, but if it gets through there, look for the 24.65. Coming back on the upside, uh, if it gets above 26 here, Dennis, there's a lot of room uh, back up to yesterday's low at 27.45. Yeah, the stock is cheap though from a fundamental perspective. They're still, they reiterated their 2012 forecast of 335, I think to 355 a share. So they're still gonna, you know, projected to make a ton of money next year on a $25 stock. So like the way I've, I've actually played this in the past is I've bought the stock and wrote calls against it just to bring an in income because there is a decent premium on the Best Buy calls for you longer term players. Uh, check that out. There might be some plays there, but the growth just isn't there, and that's why you know this thing has such a low multiple. Is actually because earnings actually have been contracting even a slight bit. So uh, the stock itself, obviously, uh, from a fundamental perspective, still makes a lot of money, just not a lot of growth there. But uh, if you want to play it a different way, maybe check out that option play. Moving on though, Joel, <clears throat> here's an interesting one. We've talked about a lot over the last month. Netflix again, trading 78 bucks right now. Uh, rumors are that Verizon. Me, uh, this was rumored a couple of days ago too, but it was a little more serious, substantial rumor. I guess Fly on the Wall was reporting that they actually may make a bid in the $4.6 billion. So Fly on the Wall was even trying to put a price on it. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, where they're getting that from. But, uh, the stock's trading up $2.74 right now from its 75.26 close. So, interesting chart we've got here. Obviously, the stock had been beat up. It's been bouncing on these rumors the last few days, uh, just acquired by somebody else uh but from a technical standpoint what do you think about netflix uh just to give our, our traders just a heads up on the pre-market activity the spike of taking it to 80 dollars uh so that's going to be uh, uh our first stopping point or good resistance in the pre-market uh you're getting a lot of consolidation here right around the 78 level uh, looks like our buyers are coming in trying to, you know, support that stock at that level. Um, if you look at the, uh, looking at the dailies, uh, it had a high back on uh, November 21st at 79.98. Uh, that concurs with the $80 level we mentioned in the pre-market. Uh, 11, on 11.17, we were up at 81. Uh, not sure where that dollar uh, multiple comes out on price. Uh, from a tactical perspective, I mean, since this thing sniffed three hundred dollars uh, back in, uh, got over three hundred back in July, we've come back down to fifty bucks. As far as looking at, uh, you know, a fifty percent retracement, uh, could be a lot of room on the upside for Netflix. Uh, moving on to Dupont, Joel. Here is interesting. Obviously, they yeah. came out. Uh... <laughs> I, I can't really understand this. So they come out, you know, two days ago. Was it two days ago? Yeah, that yep. they came out low, lower, lower uh, their guidance. Now they come out 
And uh, and just out of the blue, Laura, the guy, and now they come out and they affirm this strong long-term growth outlook. So I guess they got ticked that their stock got killed so bad. They came out and said, hey, 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 look, uh, look out. We just, you know, we're, you know, saying a weak quarter, but we're saying still outlook's good long-term. So they almost come out saying the exact opposite. So the stock is getting a little bit of lift as DuPont does reaffirm their long-term growth outlook. So their short-term's not that great, but their long-term is rosy, they're saying. But uh, stock closed 43.91, trading 44.55 right now, so getting a little bit of lift on there. I'd expect some resistance in this 45 area. We started to get above that 45 and a half, then it's a little bit of gap you could fill in there for a buck. But uh, what do you think there on uh, Nef- or on Dupont, Joel? Dupont, I mean, looking back, Dennis, uh, until this company can uh, make up their mind, you know, which way their earnings are going. I think I'd be buying this stock under 44 and selling it if it gets near 48. It's been holding that range since the uh, middle of October. Uh, there's really, you know, no cause for it to really break out out of the $48 level. And from what the company's saying, they really don't like it when it's under 44. So uh, that's the range in uh, in Tupon until uh, otherwise uh, noted. Uh, we do have another little thing, RIO and IVN. So Rio Tinto uh, went, won some arbitration ruling there, I think in Canada there, uh, against IVN, uh, something with a poison pill. You can read the headline if you want there, just Google it. But uh, basically, RIO is trading up here, almost a buck on that news. And IVN actually trading down very significantly right now, 1770 after closing at 2070. I would have thought 18 would give some support, but it looks like it's going to cut through there. So maybe use that as resistance or if it opens over their support. I'd use it that 18 level for a swing number on the IVN. Uh, what do you think on those two stocks, Joel? What is this, uh, a couple of mining companies? Yeah. Okay. Uh, boy, that 18 looks like a great number there, but we have sliced through it in the pre-market. So I concur with you here at using that 18. I guess you try and stay short. You, uh, you know, gets above 18. You may want to reevaluate. Um, you either have a, another great line of support coming in at the, uh, at the $16 level. Uh, just a quick note on the, uh, pre-market activity. Um, the uh the low in the uh in the Rio has been in the just below the fifty dollar level. Or excuse me, it's trading below that right now. Uh the low in that has been uh forty nine oh four. So not really sure how to interpret the news on this one, Dennis. I'd be looking at the eighteen and sixteen dollar levels in the uh RIO and uh major uh resistance coming in in the RIO right around 55 but we're quite a ways away from that right now do have a little merger to report s y n o which is Synovus life technologies uh going to be acquired by baxter b a x price on that's 28 bucks a share so b a x acquiring s y n o for 28 bucks a share s y n o trading 2780 just under that takeout price so we know where that's going maybe joy could do a technical on baxter though b a x because that could have a little added volatility since they are an acquirer today well, you talk about a boring stock, and you're talking about Baxter here. I mean, this thing has held a range from 50 to 58 here, going back <laughs> since August, except for you know when we broke down uh, during uh, broke down a little bit during November. Uh, I'd really use this uh, 50, 50, 50, 60 level as support. Uh, that was the area that it broke out from, so that would be uh, your good support if we start to pull back. Coming back on the upside, uh, minor resistance here at 52. That was a stopping point on the 6th of this month. But uh, you really got to like the mid-50s here, uh, 52 to 40, 52, 42 to 78. Encompassed uh, three lows, three highs right at the beginning of the month. So uh, kind of a... Kind of a tricky stock here. Just to let you uh, folks know, 51.19 is the high tick in the pre-market. So you can use that as your swing number. Uh, that's all I've really got for you today, Joel. There's a lot of other little movers. We are up eight on the overall market here. So you're seeing some of your financials get an okay bounce here today. I'm noticing some of your commodities bouncing a bit after yesterday's sell-off. Uh, keep an eye on stocks, you know, even like Radio Shack that might have a sympathetic move with a stock like Best Buy. 
So, because uh, Best Buy is definitely going to be one of your retail drivers here today. So, anything that might have a sympathy move, you might want to keep an eye on that. Uh, other than that, anything you want to close with, Joel? Uh, yeah, we're just, uh, you know, trading uh, right near the globe back side, 1238.75. So keep on that, that level uh, for a continuation. We had a nice continuation yesterday after we took out the globe back slow. Uh, we also have a Fed meeting today, so you get a little, you know, two-sided action with that. Uh, but that's about it. 1233 stands is uh, the support uh, to keep this rally intact. Uh, that's our show for today, folks. We'll be back with you tomorrow.